Okay, students, uh, this is for Econ 2302, Principles of Microeconomics. What I'm doing here is I'm demonstrating how to construct the long-run graphs for different firms based upon them remaining in the market. So if this is your macro student, this is not for you. The assumption that we have to start with is that the firm is going to produce in the short run. Firms that produce in the short run will, of course, remain in the market in the long run. Uh, and so as a result, those firms uh, produced in the short run are going to not only remain in the market, they're going to either earn a normal profit in most cases or in a few cases earn an economic profit in the long run. So we start by using like a black pen or pencil here. I'm using a pen so it'll show up a little bit better on this video here. You need to make sure that your horizontal axis is a little longer than usual because you have a variable uh, scale of operation. And besides that, you have your dollar axis and everything. That's always what we start with. Now, what I have found is the best way to do this here for the different structures is if we uh, first construct either the demand and MR curve or, or in some cases construct the long run average total cost curve first. Since we are dealing with monopolistic competition first, and again, this is going to be if the firm produces or shuts down, or uh, pardon, produces at a profit or produces at a loss. If they shut down, there is no long run graph. I repeat, if they shut down, there is no long run graph. But for monopolistic competition, it's a little bit tricky because the firm is going to have a decrease at first in their long run average total cost curve. And then they're going to have a flat a minimum. And that's going to increase after a bit as well. And so, again, you always construct that long run average total cost curve first. We're going to label this LRAC. Okay. But again, it's got to have a curve decreasing piece here. And it should be uh, going off the track here. And I have. As you know, this is a little bit sloppy, but I'm trying to do this with a foam. Uh, but we have a decreasing piece that's curved. We have a flat bottom minimum range because there's more than one range for MES. And then we have an increasing curve piece as well. And let me just go ahead and just make a couple of adjustments on the fly so it looks a little bit neater. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to locate a point of tangency for the demand curve that is on the down slope of the LRAC curve but is not at the flat bottom. And then you get your straight edge of your protractor and you line it up. So remember, you start at the dollar axis, you have your tangency, and then your demand curve down here. And you notice the LRs on everything here? That's actually kind of important uh, because this is a long run, cost of rib in the long run. We're going to find a spot that is somewhere here in the middle of that minimum range next. Long run marginal cost, we need to make sure that it passes below that tangent point and passes through that point there in the minimum, but it is an upward sloping curve. You can use the protractor if you wish, or you can freehand it. LRMC for long run marginal cost. And then the next thing we have to do is because long run marginal revenue has to intersect long run marginal cost below the tangent point, we need to line it up with the dotted line here. And remember the properties about long-run marginal revenue, and the same as short-run marginal revenue. It starts off the same point as demand, but the slope is twice as steep. And so there's marginal revenue for the long run. Now, remember in the long run for any firm, as long as the firm is producing the short run, it will have a long graph. Adjustments will happen. In the case of monopolistic competition, if they start with a loss, some firms will exit the market. The firms that remain get a larger share of market demand, and their costs drop because there's fewer firms competing for advertising dollars. If they start with a profit, it's the exact opposite. New firms enter the market, and so the firms that remain get a smaller share of market demand. At the same time, more competition for advertising dollars makes the curve shift to the right. Now. The thing is, as long as demand is at least tangent to LRAC, we've got some quantity where the firm normal profits of the firm stays in the market. But that's only at that one point. You notice LRAC is working away from demand either way. Any other quantity except for that one is directly below the tangent point where long run MR intersects long run C. That is going to be an economic loss, and firms won't put up with those in the long run. But because these things happen to line up just so, I'm taking my blue pen now. Long run MR is equal to long run MC. Tangent point is A, and there's your long run Q star. Now remember the properties of a tangent point, students. Tangent points are on both curves simultaneously. It is on the LRAC curve, and it is on the long run demand curve at the same time. So we're going to go ahead and go left this way over here. 
And that's going to be our long run P star. But I want you to notice something that is equal to LRAC at long run K star. Let me zoom this out just a little bit here. Because of the fact, and that C is a little, needs a little bit bigger here. Price is equal to long run average total cost. That means P star times Q star, which is total revenue, is equal to LRAC times LRQ, uh, long run Q star, which is going to equal the total cost. And so we end up having total revenue in the long run equal to total cost in the long run, which is equal to the area of that one rectangle. Zero, long run P star. A, long run Q star. And so because of the fact that total revenue is equal to total cost, TR minus TC in the long run is equal to, I'm going to wait for a moment for you all to think about that. Since they're equal to each other, that means it's $0.00. And we call that a normal profit. Now, last but least, does this firm achieve the minimum efficient scale? Well, remember, folks, the minimum efficient scale happens below the minimum range. It has to be below here. Do you notice that long run star? Nowhere near that. So this firm does not achieve in the modest test that was its charge, minimum efficient scale. Alrighty. But again, this is monopolistic competition. And the only way that this long run graph would actually exist is provided that the firm has produced in the short run. If it shuts down, there is no long run graph because the firm is likely to exit the market. So that's the first one. Now let's deal with perfect competition next. Again, in perfect competition, if the firm shuts down the short run, there is no long run graph. But if the firm under perfect competition, whether it produces or shuts down, is going to uh, exist in the long run, I'm, sorry, I'm saying it wrong again, students. If the firm produces at a profit or produces at a loss, they will have a long-run graph. If they shut down the market, let's be clear. The thing is, what's going to happen for perfect competition is, if the firm is producing at a loss, that's typical for all the firms, they're going to end up, uh, pardon me, having some firms exit the market, which makes market supply shift left, which makes the price increase, which means the firms that remain are going to end up having... Uh, Price go up, the losses get smaller, the process continues until there's no more losses and the firms that remain all make normal profits. Now, if the firm starts with a profit, it's the opposite. Okay, firms start to enter the market, which makes the market supply shift right, which makes the price drop, which makes the economic profit shrink. This continues until, again, no more economic profits, just a normal profit. So again, we've got our dollar axis, our origin, and our quantity axis here. And now, since we're dealing with perfect competition, it's better to construct the demand and MR curve first because of the way that they're all lined up. Uh, you need to make sure it's horizontal and parallel to that quantity axis here. And so I'm using the straight edge here right now. We need to mark over here the long run P star because this firm isn't a perfect competition and it's a price taker. And this is long run demand, which is also long run marginal revenue. All righty. So that's the first one. Now, Thing is, remember, all curves in the long run, there's only one long run average total cost, which is long run average variable, long run average cost. They're all going to intersect at one common point, uh, which is going to be the minimum long run average total cost curve. So I'm going to use this piece of the protractor to construct my long run marginal cost curve next. And so here's long run marginal cost. But the thing is, some of y'all have had calculus already know this. When you have a... Uh, a curve, its minimum or maximum value is going to be having a horizontal tangent line. Notice the demand curve happens to be horizontal, so we can just line this bad boy up very easily here. So there is our long run average total cost curve. All right. And notice all four curves long run marginal revenue, long run marginal cost, long run average total cost, and long run demand all intersect out at that one point, which the minimum long run average total cost. Okay, so now again, as long as there's at least some quantity where long run P star is equal to long run average total cost for long run Q star, and that's happening, we have a point of tangency here once again. Be that tangent point, okay, the minimum point of LRA is also tangent to the demand curve, and so at that one quantity that's directly below here, 
We have a price that is exactly equal to long run average total cost. So as a result, we're going to have a normal profit in the long run. But all the other quantities, you notice long run average total cost above price. So any other one will be an economic loss and firms won't deal with that in the long run. They want to have at least a normal profit. So again, long run marginal cost equals long run marginal revenue at that tangent point. That's corner A. And then there's long run Q star. Please notice point A is on both the long run average total cost curve and on the long run demand curve. So that means long run P star is equal to, again, long run average total cost, long run Q star. Wherever price is equal to average total cost, total revenue is equal to total cost, so we have a normal profit. This is perfect competition. Let's make sure we make a note of this. Remember again, if the firm shuts down, no long run graph because firm are likely to exit the market. Now, since price is equal to long run average total cost for long run Q star, long run total revenue is equal to long run total cost, which is equal to the area of that one rectangle. Area rectangle zero, long run P star, A long run Q star. Since total revenue is equal to total costs, the long run profit is a subtraction of two of the same numbers. That's going to equal to zero dollars and zero cents. We call that a normal profit. Now, last question. Will this firm achieve minimum efficient scale? In minimum efficient scale, the firm's long run star must be directly straight line below the minimum range or point of LRAC. And remember, horizontal tangent line is going to be at the minimum or maximum. That long run Q star is directly below that minimum point. Okay, this firm achieves minimum efficient scale. By the way, this is only going to be true for perfect competition. For any of the other structures, they're going to either be too big or too small. So there's perfect competition, but again, only if the firm produces, whether at a profit or a loss. Now, pure monopoly... Remember, that firm is profit. The examples of the loss were like tax dodges and stuff like that, sketchy behavior stuff we would not sanction. Right. The thing is, with a long run, so we have to be mindful of the vertical, not just the horizontal a little bit longer to accommodate for that steep demand curve. Okay, this is a long run graph for a pure monopoly. Since pure monopolies are going to produce in the short run, they will have a long run graph. And so we start with our long run demand, steep negative slope, D with an LR on it. Remember, marginal revenue originates from the same point as demand, but it's twice as steep. So there's long run marginal revenue, MRLR. And the long run marginal cost curve is a lot steeper, so I'm freehanding this. If I had a French curve, I would use that, but I did not have a French curve today. But now here's the thing you have to understand. Again, if I had the French curve, this would be easier. I'm having to freehand this. The demand curve for a pure monopoly has a long descent before it hits a minimum, and the minimum is always going to be where it crosses marginal. But that has a very steep ascent afterwards. That's the long run average total cost for a monopoly, whether pure or regulated. Now, this time there's no tangent point here. That's a long run economic profit. That's the area of the rectangle from C long run to P star long run to A to B. Pure monopolies will make long run economic profits. Some oligopolies will as well, but we don't do graphs for oligopolies. For oligopolies, we do strategic behavior instead. Of course, the last question is, does this firm achieve the minimum efficient scale? Well, here's the minimum LRAC. That's to the right of that long run Q star. That long run Q star is to the left of it where LRAC is higher. That is not minimum LRAC. But remember what a monopoly does is they restrict the output of a product that's kind of a necessity and they make it more scarce to drive prices up and get bigger profits. Oh yeah, you're not gonna achieve MES because you're underproducing and undersized. It may be profitable, but it's not efficient. So this firm does not achieve minimum efficient scale. Okay, let's talk about the last one, and that is long run for regulated monopoly. Folks, regulated monopolies actually have a very different situation from pure monopolies for several reasons. 
Remember, they have to hire a lot more lawyers and accountants and financial analysts because of the fact that they're always having rape cases either forced on them by the government or by citizens suing them. Or if they don't have that, then they're trying to argue a rate case to justify themselves having a rate increase. And so they tend to be a little bit a little bit oversized compared to the pure monopoly. So again, we're going to make sure we have a little more vertical height on that dollar axis because it is a monopoly after all. And again, we have a steep negative slope demand curve. Demand, long. And then we have a steep negative sloped MR curve. MR long run. We never had a regulated monopoly shutting down the short run because no regulator worth salt would uh, make a price so low the firm would shut down. You wouldn't want to have people outside the governor's mansion with pitchforks and torches because the electric power is turned off because they misregulated the utility companies. That would be a bad idea. This is going to be a regulated monopoly. But the thing is, there's going to be cost increases for a regulated monopoly in the long run. And there's going to be downward pressure on rates. And it leads to a very interesting result. Now, again, I'm going to go ahead and construct the long run market cost. Okay, the upward sloping piece from the descent there. The thing here with, with a regulated monopoly, though, is there tends to be upward pressure on costs and downward pressure on prices. And so, again, let me construct that demand curve LRAC. And what ends up happening, it ends up forcing a regulated monopoly into a normal profit situation because of cost overruns and downward pressure on price. Now remember, what we colloquially call the break-even point, what I prefer that you call the normal profit price, is wherever an average total cost curve crosses a demand curve, and that has short and long run. Remember, LRAC is both long-run average variable and long-run average total cost. And so that's where your normal profit price would be, and this is where your long-run P reg would P, excuse me, reg long run. Now, also remember for a regulated monopoly, they have a different profit maximization. Their rule says that the firm is going to choose Q reg wherever P reg crosses demand. Well, what do you know? It's back over here, there's corner A. And again, corner A is on both the demand curve and the long run average total cost curve. So there's Q reg long run. And so since the price is both long run average total cost and price, so I'm gonna write LRAC at Q reg. That means total revenue is once again equal to total cost. I'm going to put some information over here. The total revenue, long run, regulated monopoly, P reg times Q reg. But that's also equal to LRAC times Q. So that's equal to total cost, long run, regulated monopoly. It's equal to one rectangle, area rectangle, zero, P reg, long run, A, Q reg, long run. Now, since total revenue is equal to total cost, our regulated monopoly profit for the long run is equal to zero dollars and zero cents, which is again called a normal profit. Okay, pardon the shakiness here, folks. This little stand for my cell phone is acting kind of wonky. I apologize. Now, does this firm achieve minimum efficient scale? If you take a look, here's min LRAC. You notice Q reg LR is past min LRAC. You notice that that vertical for corner A is a lot higher than the minimum point. Remember, the business is larger than it needs to be. The extra lawyers and financial analysts they have. So the result of what happens here is this regulated monopoly is experiencing just economies of scale, and it's going to be too big here. So firm does not achieve minimum efficient scale. All right. So that is how you construct these graphs. That's how you construct these graphs for the different firms for the long run. But remember, there is only a long run graph if the firm is produced in the short run. Profit or loss doesn't matter. Okay. You do not have a graph for the long run if the firm shuts down in the short run. When the firm shuts down in the short run, they are 80% likely to exit the market or more, and we assume that they do. I hope this helps y'all out.